there are three special applications of ratio and proportions that I'm going to cover in this video. The first of which is similar figures. When two objects that only differ by a scale factor, in other words, you're just scaling them up or down, um, that's called a similar figure. And we can relate these two things, um, be they shapes or whatever, by using a proportion. In this case here, we've got two triangles. Um, the side, uh, the, the left-hand side length is eight for the big one, and then it's X for the small one, and then 10 and five, respectively. What's important here is that however we, we do the, this relationship, that we're relating the same kind of quantities. So eight and X are very much related because they are the same side of the triangle. Also, eight and 10 are related because they are the same triangle. They're, they're the same measurements on the same triangle. Now, what I recommend doing is writing it out like I showed in the previous video, namely, eight goes to X, as 10 goes to 5. The same relationship there. If you write it this way, then what you'll see is that we can immediately make this into a proportion. And now to solve for x, all we have to do is cross, multiply, and divide. 8 times 5 is 40. 10 times x is 10x. We have 40 equals 10x. And then we just divide by 10. 40 divided by 10 is 4. So x equals 4. And you see here, we can see the scale factor directly. If x equals 4, then all we have to do is take 4, multiply it by 2, and we get 8. We take 5, multiply it by 2, and we get 10. So the scale factor here would be times two. An architectural drawing of an outside deck is three and a half inches wide by 10 and seven eighths inch long. If the deck will be 14 feet wide in the actual um, you know, building of it, what's the actual length of the deck and what's the scale factor? So uh, let's say that drawing is going to be a rectangle, right? It's going to be three and a half inches wide and about 10 7 8 inch long. So around like that. So three and a half inch wide and then 10 and 7 8 inch long. And then this is going to go to 14 feet wide and then X uh, feet long. So how do we find this? Well, we can use a, a proportion to do that. We do three and a half inch goes to 14 feet as 10 and 7 eighths inch goes to X feet. Now I'm, I'm writing this the same way I did in the, in, in, with the triangles because we can immediately change this into a proportion. The most important thing to note, however, is that I have inches and inches together in a column and feet and feet together in a column. When I do this, the units will cancel and that's what we want. We want what's called a ratio equal to a ratio. They have to be unitless. So I can immediately create this into a proportion and you see that the units cancel, of course. And now we can solve this by cross multiplying and dividing. Three, uh, three and a half uh, inch times x is just gonna be three and a half times x, equaling 10 and 7 eighths times 14. You can use a number of ways. Um, I would probably do uh, 10 times, or sorry, eight, eight times 10 is 80 plus seven is gonna be 87 over eight times 14 over one. We can of course reduce by two, uh, cross canceling by two, that gives us four and seven there. And then multiplying straight across, that gives us 
87 times 7 is 609. And 4 in the, in the denominator. So we get 609 over 4. I'm going to change the 3.5 into a mixed number. Do that quite easily by taking 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 plus 1 is 7. So we have 7 over 2. And now all I have to do is divide. Divide by the thing in front of the x, so 7 halves. What you see here is we have a, a uh, let me do a different color here. We have a fraction with a division sign and another fraction, meaning we're dividing by fractions, which we never do, right? Instead, we multiply by the reciprocal. So we get 609 divided by 4 times the reciprocal of the bottom becomes 2 over 7. Now we can cross cancel. See if 7 go in 609 evenly. Yep, they can. Very good. 609 divided by 7 is 87. And we get x equal to 87 halves. Or you can uh, rearrange this into a mixed number. How many times can 2 go in 87? It can go in there 43 times. 43 times 2 is 86. We have 87 minus 86 is 1. This, of course, is going to be uh, in feet. So this is uh, 43 and a half feet. OK, that was part A, find the actual length. Now we need to find the scale factor. All we have to do to do that is ask, Three and a half times what gives us 14? To do that, all we have to do is just take 14 divided by 14 divided by uh, three and a half. The bigger divided by the smaller gives you the scaling up factor. The smaller divided by the bigger gives you the scale down factor. Either way that you have to go, just keep that in mind. Okay, three and a half, it's gonna be better, better to write that as a uh, improper fraction, which is seven and a half, that's what we calculated before. And now we have multiplication by a fraction, or by the reciprocal, I mean. You see we can divide. So we get two times two is four, one times one is one, four over one is four. In other words, three and a half times four is 14 feet. Well, the, the, the number three and a half times four is 14. 10 and seven eighths times four gives us 43 and a half. Here's a cylindrical vent that needs to be cut into a roof and the roof has a pitch of two thirds, which in other words means it has a rise of two to a run of three. Now, if we know um, the but this measurement here is six, this distance right here. We're asking what is this um, thing that must be cut into here? Of course, if the top is six, that means the bottom must also be six. You're in six inches. What must X be? Well, it just told us that the, the roof uh, pitch is two thirds, meaning a rise of two over a run of three. This has to equal the, uh, let, me, let me write this one really here. I want to write like this because I want to have the units the same. Uh, a rise of two goes to a run of three. Looking at our, at, our, at our picture here, this right here is a run. A run is a horizontal distance and a rise is a vertical distance. Well, the rise is going to be x goes to a run of six inches. So these are of course gonna all be in inches because that's the unit that's given to us. And now you can see that we have a rise and runs over each other, which means we can immediately make this into a proportion. Cross multiply and divide, two times six is 12. This equals three times x, which is three x. 
course, divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Oops, let me write that in black. X equals 4, and that's in inches, as every other unit was given was inches. The next type of application problem is going to be called direct variation. We just talked about similar figures. Direct vari variation is where one quantity increases, then another increases as well. Um, similar figures is actually the same thing as direct variation, right? Uh, when the triangle that I showed in the first in the first place, when one side increased, the other side increased as well. So we had when one increased, the other increased. That's direct variation. Similar figures is just a, a, a more geometrical way of thinking about it. Um, it's easier to kind of see what's going on. Direct variation is like the general term for anything that follows this pattern. When one quantity increases, the other quantity increases as well. So here, this problem says electrical resistance of a wire is directly proportional to its length. The more wire, the more resistance. The less wire, the less resistance. It also works that way. If we have one foot of nichrome, a heater element wire that has resistance of 1.65 ohms, so one foot goes to 1.65 ohms. The omega there, the Greek letter omega, is the unit for ohms. That's the representation of it. What length of wire, or x lengths of wire, is needed for 19.8 ohms? x goes to 19.8. And you see here that I have the units on top of each other, which means they cancel, which is what we want. Now all we have to do is cross multiply and divide. 1 times 19.8 is 19.8. And this equals x times 1.65 or 1.65x. Then we just divide by the number in front of the x term. So we have x equals 19.8, 19.8 divided by 1.65 gives us 12. And we know x is in feet because we're looking for what length of wire, and the length of wire was given to us with feet before. So we have to have feet there. 12 feet is required for that. Horsepower is directly proportional to an engine's displacement. How many horsepower will be developed by an engine with a displacement of 240 cubic inches if 380 cubic inches displaces, or the dis a displacement of 380 cubic inches develops 220 horsepower? So we know 380 cubic inch displacement develops 220 horsepower, then uh, it says uh, how many horsepower, so this is going to be our x, we know it's going to go over here, x horsepower comes from a displacement of 240 cubic inches, because this 240 is uh, what's developing that horsepower. Our um, common units are lined up, which means we can directly make this into a proportion, and the units cancel. Now all we have to do is cross multiply and divide. 380 times x, this equals 220 times 240, which is 52,800 and divide by the number in front of the x. Giving us x equal to 138.9, we'll just say 95, around two decimal places here. And that's gonna be in horsepower. Here's a power transformer. It's got 115 volt uh, transformer has 328 turns on its primary, meaning the primary coil, and it delivers a secondary volt uh, voltage of 12 volts. So how many turns on our secondary? So this is again a direct variation. In this case, we have 115 volts goes down to 12 volts. So instead of as one increases, the other increase. Now here, 
we have as one decreases, the other decreases. It's still a direct variation. It still satisfies the same relationship, so we can solve it the same kind of way. 115 volts goes to 320 turns as 12 volts goes to, well, how many turns? That's going to be our x, x turns. And once again, we can directly create a proportion out of this the way we set it up. All the units cancel. Cross multiply. 115x equals 12 times 320 is 3840. And divide. And we see we get x equals, oh, I need to do 115, 33, 33 point, write that 3 again, <laughs> 33.39, and this is going to be in turns. The last type of special application that I'm going to cover in this video is inverse variation. So the previous two have had the same kind of idea where as one increases the other increases or as one decreases the other decreases. Inverse variation as is as one increases the other quantity decreases and vice versa. So in this case if a trip takes two hours and fifty uh, if a trip takes two hours at 50 miles per hour, how long will it take at 60 miles per hour? So we have time and speed, right? If it takes two hours at 50 and then we increase how fast we go, then that means the time the trip takes should decrease. So as speed increases, time decreases. And as time increases, speed should be decreasing. What's important to note here is that two hours goes to 50 miles per hour. And here you see that we have this on opposite sides of the fraction, whereas before we've always had them on the same side, always in the numerator or in the denominator. So how long it should take, or x hours, going to 60, that is also across the um, fractions. One's in the numerator, one's in the, in the denominator. This is the key difference between direct and inverse, I should say, variation. Make sure they're on opposite sides of the fractions. We solve this, however, in the exact same manner. We cross multiply and divide. 50 times 2 is 100. I should note here real quick, the units are canceling that you still want. Um, 50 times 2 is 100, and this equals 60 times x. And we divide, let me do this in red, divide by 60. X equals, it's going to be 10 over 6. Uh, 10 over 6 divided by 2 is going to be 5 over 3, uh, which is the same thing as, so it's going to be 1.6 repeating or like 1.67. So it's gonna take one hour and two thirds of an hour, or in other words, 40 minutes. One hour and 40 minutes. Does that make sense? If two hours is for 50 miles per hour, we increase the speed by just a little bit, 10, 10 miles per hour, then you see that instead of two hours, now we have an hour and 40 minutes. It decreases the time by just a little bit. So that, that's reasonable. 1.67 hours, or in other words, one hour in 40 minutes. So the distance necessary to stop a subway train um, at a given speed is inversely proportional to its deceleration, right? The faster it decelerates, the less distance it needs to stop. The more, uh, the slower it decelerates, the more distance it will need to stop. So they're inversely proportional. Um, if a train were traveling at 30 miles per hour, 180 feet to stop is, is inversely proportional to its deceleration, which is 0 
g's that's the g stands for gravity which gravity is a uh, acceleration so it's going to be some portion of gravity 180 uh, feet goes to 0.18 g's of deceleration what is the stopping distance x so x feet when it's decelerating at 0 0.15 g's now this 30 miles per hour this is kind of like a like a kind of a trick to, to put in there you can see that the the initial thing says the distance necessary to stop so we're looking for a distance here like at a given speed is inversely proportional to its deceleration so the distance is inversely proportional to the deceleration the given speed is not really involved in this. We're, we're assuming that the speed is the same in both cases. So that's why you should really not worry about the 30 miles per hour. Now what's important here is to note we can't just you know erase these things and make them equal to and all that stuff. No, that would be a direct var variation. The first thing we have to do is flip one of the two um, units. I'm just going to flip the, the second one here. I'm going to write this as 0 0.15 G's and 0 0.18 G's. And now you see that 180 goes to that, X goes to that. We have an inverse variation. So I can, I can remove the rest of this. As long as you make a single flip, then you have an inverse variation just fine. The units cancel, so we are good to go to cross, multiply, and divide. 180 times 0.18 is 32.4. This equals x times 1 point, or 0.15. Now all we have to do is divide. We get x equal to two one six so if it decelerates slower in other words it stops slower then it's going to need a longer distance which x is of course in feet it's going to need 216 feet for that deceleration of 0.15 g's the time required for an outlet pipe to empty a tank the time to, to drain a tank is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of the pipe. In other words, how big the pipe is, right? If you have a very big pipe, then a tank will, will empty very fast. If you have a very small pipe, the time required to empty the tank, the same tank, will, will be uh, much higher. So time and area are inversely proportional in, in this case that we're talking about here. Okay, so we have a pipe with a cross-sectional area of 100, get my markers ready here, 113.0 square inches. I can write like this, or I can write it um, kind of more mathematically appropriate as square inches like that. This goes to 6.4 hours. They empty a certain tank. If we're using the same tank, then we have a new cross-sectional area of 50, oops, that's not the same unit, 50.25 square inches is um, how long would it take to empty this? So X hours, that's the how long X hours. So this would, this, if we just currently went with what we have written here, this would be direct variation. We need to make inverse variation or proportional. To do that, all we have to do is flip one of these things. So I'm going to do that by flipping this side. We have X hours and 6.4 hours. And now you see that I've crossed my, my um, related quantities here. And now I can make them equal to each other. And the units cancel. Now we can cross multiply and divide. 113 times 6.4, 723.2, and 50.25 times x. Now we can divide 
So x equals 50.25 on the bottom there gives us 14.39. I'm just rounding to two decimal places. That's pretty standard to round to that many, especially since they kind of went there to here, but 14.39, um, and of course, x is in hours. That's the unit of time you're given. But so we've decreased the cross-sectional area, which means we're going to increase the time. So we went from 6.4 hours to 14.39 hours.